Good morning, folks. Today's show seriously focused on the sun. We've taken two of the three impacts expected. A geomagnetic storm has engulfed our planet, and we have excellent solar storm power outage candidates. Let's head to spaceweathernews.com, and let's first eye the last day on our star. Little surges, no solar flares or filament eruptions, and actually, as the central dark coronal hole begins to turn, another dark patch is visible coming in from the left. We'll come back to that because the main story is in the solar wind. So we began the day with a weak coronal hole stream, but within hours, a sharp shock wave showed up in the data. This was the impact of the CME more than 24 hours earlier than expected. That was the time when we sent out the alert through the disaster prediction app, Solar Wind Shock Wave Detected, came through around lunchtime in the United States. After that, we saw a significant variability to the stream and more intense pressure peaks throughout the following hours, and this is what drives the global geomagnetic storm conditions this morning. We're coming now to the Geospace Magnetic Field movies from NOAA. These show how the velocity, density, and overall dynamic pressure of the solar wind is affecting Earth's magnetic field. The largest fluctuations came with the solar wind overnight and thus the overnight storm condition. When it comes to geomagnetic storms, most of the well-known effects begin at the poles and migrate towards the equator as the intensity increases. That is what is shown here on the model for ground perturbations due to the storm. But when a shock wave impacts, there is a more sudden and immediate effect as the magnetosphere is compressed, Van Allen belts are compressed, and electrons from those and solar energetic particles from the solar wind are forced downward through the atmosphere. There's excellent work by Brian Tinsley out of Texas on the meteorological effects of the electron precipitation, but there is also an equator-focused surge in the total electron content, the equatorial electrojet, and this is relevant for technology. You can see here, it's not pole-based disruptions at the time of the impact. That's focused more towards the equator in the atmosphere. While a couple excellent candidates from storm condition existed in anomalous power pole fires and equipment malfunctions in the United States, even a small plane engine exploding in midair in Utah is the same time as the impact. But the largest energy-driven event yesterday was in Central America pretty much all of it, and even into Mexico. An overload of electricity an hour after that alert we sent through the app caused the surge protection system to fail, which is really its only job, stop the surges. It was too powerful, and due to the interconnectedness of the entire region, it set off a chain reaction in sister system and triggered millions to be left without power. Luckily, it was a disruptive rather than a crippling blow, and most people are getting back up and running. Looking at the coronal hole departing, I'm thinking we may get lucky and actually not see that stream for a whole nother day, not really hoping for another impact yet again today. Better view of the next coronal hole incoming from the left as well. Website members at suspiciousobservers.org, very interesting fly on the wall podcast episode yesterday. Also be sure to keep eyes on the sun and on the solar wind at spaceweathernews.com. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new valley of the sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.